Okay, so let's look at a little program we've got here. So what we've got is a file of pupil data. And if we just look at the file, what we've got is um, we've got a forename, a surname, an email address, their form class, and their date of birth, and then how they did in three separate tests. So what we've got here is a program to store all three, five, seven, eight little pieces of an eight parallel arrays. So we've got 100 of them, and I can see that just by scrolling down to the file here. And I've just used a variable, so I don't need to put the number 100 there all the time. I've got the relatively standard code that you're fairly used to seeing by now of reading it and splitting it now in the minute. Obviously, it's a comma-separated value, so we are splitting it on the comma. Um, other files may be separated on, on, on spaces or tabs or other characters. You would just change that one. And then I'm reading them into three par eight parallel arrays with making sure that my test numbers are cast as integers. Now what you'll see is I've got to return an insane amount of arrays here. I've got to attach to return eight parallel arrays. So I'm saying returning my eight arrays there and in the display min I'm only going to find their minimum mark for test one and then I want to display all that relevant pupils details. So what you'll see is I've actually got to pass in the same whole eight arrays. There's a large amount of parameters being passed here. So we're going to look at using a record structure to, to mimic this. But first of all, we will just run our program and just check the value we get. So it's saying that the lowest mark in test one was someone called Leonani Burdiel. So we're just going to quickly check that that's the case. And she did in fact get zero. So I doubt obviously that there's a, a worse mark than that. So that looks like it is the final one. So we're going to look at simplifying this by changing our file to use records. So let's look at using some records to store this. So I'm just going to add an extra few lines at the top here. Now Python doesn't actually have a definitive way to store records. There are some newer ways in, in, in the newest version of Python, which is currently 3.7. But I'm going to make a class called pupil. And the syntax for that is you say class and then the name, and then I need to define Although this is out the scope of the course, because we're actually using a class to do it, this is actually a um, constructor method for a class. And in here, what we've got is self dot. You can kind of ignore that, but here we're going to define the field. So I've got for name. I'm just going to do a little bit of copy and pasting here. So I've got for name, then surname, then I have I've got email. And then I've got form class. Then I've got my date of birth. This is just going to be a string as well. Then I've got test one. So I'm going to initialize that to um, zero. And I might as well just copy and paste that line there. And I've got test two and three. So that defines a record structure. Now, just to check that that actually works, we can make a new pupil. So I can say gem equals People, except I'll say I need to put it in case sensitive. And what I can say is that I could set Jim's for name, uh, sorry, for name, surname, for name will do. And I can say that his for name is now Jim. Okay, his, um, let's just go for his email. And it is Jim at bob.com. And I want to print things out from there. I would just say print Jim dot forename. And if we just quickly test this, just to check that it works, I'll run my program called records two. Okay, you'll see that it's actually. In fact, I didn't actually tell it to print anything. Oh no, I did told it to print its forename. Now, if we want an array of, um, if we want an array of pupils, uh, sorry, or pupils in this case okay what we're going to do is we would not declare it a single one we would actually say that pupils is in array and what we're going to say is it's the class is called pupil so pupil open bracket close bracket and for x and range and then how many of them we need so if i just make a, a small array of two of them and if I wanted to put something in um, pupil one, I could say that pupils zero dot, and then I could say for name 
is Jim. Okay, the pupil's forename. Sorry, not forename, surname. Okay, is Smith, and so on and so on. And I, so I could also put that in a loop, and which is what we're going to look at next. So if I just quickly get rid of those two lines there, and I'm just going to cut my line out of here. So rather than have these eight parallel arrays, I can actually get rid of all that and say that I'm going to make an array called pupils for x in range, and I'm just going to put in my value of 100. So that will make my array of 100 pupils. Now, like earlier on, we just need to do a little bit of changing. So now our arrays aren't, we don't have eight arrays. We've got one array called pupils. So what I'm going to quickly do is change all my eight parallel arrays to the same array, so pupils. And then what I'm going to do is, well, the first one was the, and if I just look at my, because I don't know, I created them in the same. So it's forename, then surname, then email, and then form class, and then dot date of birth. Let me just type that one in. Remember, it's case sensitive. That was test one, and that was test two, and last but not least, that was test three. So what I'm saying is that my array is called pupils. That is telling me which pupil I'm dealing it with, and this is saying which field, effectively, of the record that I'm dealing with that I'm assigning. And the right-hand side of the code hasn't actually changed any at all. And it also means that I can take all of my eight parallel arrays now and actually on return a single array. And I'll just quickly go down here and do the same there. And just to keep my formal and actual different, I'll change that to pupils. Now, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to put a breakpoint and we're just going to check that it works. So I'm going to run and I'm going to debug record two. Just give it a second or two. So it should read the file as normal. And I just put a breakpoint there. And if I look at my array called pupils, now you'll see that those are memory addresses. That will happen if you go to print them out, but we'll deal with that in a second or two. And you'll see if I look at pupil zero, and I'm just going to go and check that pupil zero is in fact correct. So pupil zero should be Yeti Goundry. Yep. Y Goundry at w3.org. That looks fine. Form class is in the right place. And then I've got date of birth. Yep, and then I've got my three tests. So that looks to be working okay, and I'm going to kind of assume that the rest is okay as well. And you'll notice that I'm only returning one array, and I'm assigning one array there. So what we're going to look at now is adapting the find minimum to go and deal with that and how to print stuff off from it as well. So we're just going to adapt our find minimum subroutine. So first thing we're going to do is say that, well, I've actually not got all of those. I've now got an array of pupils. And I'll need to just adapt that down here as well. Now my actual parameter is called pupils with a capital P. So I'm just going to make sure that I pass in those. Now that passes in the array of pupils with all the associated uh, bits and bobs. Sorry, I've left my program running. So I'll just stop that just now. Make sure that some, you remember to stop all your processes just in case you've got old version of programs running. So our find minimum, which is a fairly generic one, just found the, the stored the minimum position. So what we're going to say is we used to have an array parallel array called test ones. But this time our array is called pupils. So pupils counter, so that'll tell me the position that that pupil was in. And it's actually dot test one. So if what we're looking at is so what we're saying is that's the current test one we're looking at. If that's smaller than not position zero, the, the position called min. So if that's less than what we're looking at, then the new minimum position is whatever the counter is at. Now we also used a four names array there. Obviously we've only got one array now, so we can put pu pupils. We could opt, always optimize it slightly by saying, well, we're saying the minimum position is zero. So we could actually say, you just start at position one. Now we need to change a bit of things down here. So remember, minimum is storing the position of the um, person with the lowest mark. And I don't think I've got a record of it anymore, but we could go and run our previous program just to check. So if I quickly go and run our first record program, it was a person with zero marks. Okay, so it's Leon, Nanny, Burdale. So we just need to make sure that when we run it again, we get the same uh, record. So the lowest mark in the test 
would have been pupils at the position of minimum and the mark would be in test one. And it wasn't in the four named array anymore, so I'm actually going to change all my arrays here to pupils. So it's pupils minimum dot four name, pupils minimum dot surname. It would be pupils. Remember, that's the the, the 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 parameter that's referred to inside the subroutine here. So pupils men, and that would be her sorry their email address, and that would be their uh, form class. And last but not least, the date of birth tucked away down here. And I've got pupils minimum dot dob, and I think I took a bracket away there accidentally. So if we save that program, so we're looking to get that same test data again. Now you'll notice that the, the parameter passing has been much more simplified. The syntax is a little bit easier, we're not dealing with eight parallel arrays. So if I just go to um, run and make sure I run the correct program, which is record two, file was read, and that looks to be working and it looks like it matches the original. So use of records allow me to create an array of records and allow me to simplify my parameter passing and it's allowed me to access particular fields using the field, the field names that we've defined in effectively an empty class.